what's going on everybody welcome to the rec nation listen guys we are back with some more of the fat electrician this time nick is telling us about the time 43 mailmen fought the germans the first battle of world war ii guys i can't stress to you how much i absolutely love what nick is doing on his channel the fat electrician bringing these lesser known stories to light he's just a uh, top tier storyteller and i'm there for it especially when you when you give me some more history nuggets that aren't really covered you know this is this is what it's about guys and also if you haven't seen this video go go not not this video his original video make sure you go um watch it on his channel first because i mean he is just he is slaying he is slaying the youtube thing right now and he's he's getting all the success he deserves because absolutely phenomenal phenomenal on all on all accounts so let's go ahead let's dive into this i am my interest is so peaked 43 male men fight the germans like i <laughs> i gotta hear this so guys without further ado let's go ahead and and just enjoy and just enjoy this story. Let me see if I can make this any bigger. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Oh, hey. Hey, that might be it. That might be it. You know, I don't know. Let me know, guys. I know this is an aesthetic thing, but, you know, I, I try to play off you guys. This thing in the middle of the screen, or I usually have it in the bottom. I don't know if it matters, but I feel like in the bottom I can make it a little bit bigger. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah, because I watch all our all YouTube on my phone, so it's like sometimes it's hard to see what's being what's being watched. So anyway, all right, let's go. Without further ado, three, two, one, take it away, Nick. All right, let me set the scene for you. It's September 1st, 1939. It's Friday, but you've got a job. You've got stuff to do because you're a Polish mailman and you just got to work. So you grab your packages and you set out to go deliver the mail. And right as you step outside the post office, a bunch of armored vehicles pull up full of German SS soldiers and they inform you that you're going to surrender <laughs> or else. Do you A, surrender or B, go back in the post office and proceed to get in a firefight with the Germans for the next 19 hours? What? What? Today we're talking what? about the most what? Excuse me? <laughs> the balls. Like you <laughs> going out to do your mail run. <laughs> Germans like this is our this is our town now. And you're like, "We'll see about that, bud. We'll see about that. Hold my beer." I uh, sorry, hold my package. <laughs> that sounded terrible. Let's just get back into it. God it gangster damn it. post office of all time and the first battle of World War II when 43 Polish mailmen went toe to toe with the German SS for 19 hours. Wow. But first a word from our sponsors. This video is brought to you by my favorite sporting goods store, Shields. They've got over 35 retail locations all across the United States. And if you can't make it to one of these incredible retail locations, they also have an even better online store that Come I'm going to have linked in the description down below. And of course, our newest sponsor, Zaka Life Go Bomb. It's made in the USA, 100% organic, Life. full spectrum CBD bomb that you can put on any ache, any sprain, or athletic injury and it's going to make it immediately feel better this is one of the few times that i've actually approached a company to rep their product and not the other way around huh. because i actually use this stuff okay there i'm 30 go. i'm fat i've been doing construction for years things hurt this makes it not hurt so if i love the same that as that's okay that's why that's why nick and i we're not so different nick we're not so different <laughs> did construction first then did YouTube. Previous military, construction, YouTube. Hmm. My path, exactly. <laughs> so, okay. Just another layer. Or have we become best friends? Yes. He just doesn't know it. <laughs> That's me go ahead and awesome. give this stuff a try over at zakalife.com use the discount code fat5 to save some money let's get back to the video all right important background info this is the german empire before world war one got it okay great this is the german empire after world war one notice how poland cuts it in two and at the very tippy top of poland there is the free city of danzig okay what is a free city and why does that map seem to imply that it is its own country well because basically it is it is its own sovereign huh. entity with its own passports its own currency and its own form of government you see at wow. the end of world war 
one, when they were negotiating the Treaty of Versailles, both Germany and Poland really, really wanted dominion over the city of Danzig because, as you can see, it's built on the oh. coast of a perfect geographic harbor. This made it a major port city and an economic powerhouse, which is why Germany and Poland were both fighting over it. And they were fighting over it for so long that it would end up holding up the entire Treaty of Versailles. And finally, wow. the League of Nations stepped in and they're like, hey, okay, well, now neither one of you are going to get it. It's going to be its own sovereign entity, its own little thing. Whatever, we don't have time for this. Moving on. So the Free City of Danzig was founded in 1920. However, considering that pretty much the entire population was either German or Polish, Danzig decided that they were going to grant a bunch of extraterritorial properties to either country, and one of those properties would be the Polish post office, which was just that, sovereign Polish territory. And that's wow. pretty much all the background info you need. So fast forward to April 1939, things are getting real tense between so, Poland and Germany. So that would be like a um, an embassy, correct? Am I hearing that right? Like sovereign territory? Anytime you step on the grounds of that post office would essentially be like stepping into Poland, right? I mean, please correct me. Please correct me, guys. You know, please. <laughs> Hitler's been in power for the last six years, the Nazi movement is well underway, and for the last couple of years, a ton of hardcore Nazis referred to as the brown shirts have basically been trying to intimidate Polish people to move out of Danzig so they can reestablish it as part of Germany. Poland, seeing this, decides, hey, they might try something soon on our extraterritorial properties, so we're going to take a single army combat engineer by the name of Konrad Gadurski. We're going to send him over to the post office, he's going to help fortify that position and teach all the mailmen how to fight. That way, hopefully they'll be able to hold the post office for like an hour or two while the army has time to get in there and defend it. So Conrad shows up at the post office. He's got a bunch of pistols, some carbines, a couple of crates of grenades, and three Browning 1928s, which as you can see is just the Polish equivalent of the American BAR. At this point, there's 56 people working at the post office. Conrad explains the situation, says he's taking volunteers for who wants to be part of the security force in okay. case shit goes down. 42 people volunteer. He then begins training them and giving them a battle plan and everybody else is just going to go run and hide in the basement if anything does go down. So for the next four months, Conrad is both training the mailman and building up fortifications. He ends up establishing one of the mailmen as the second in command, and that is Alphonse Flizikovsky. All right, hmm. fast forward September 1st, 1939. It's Friday. All the mailmen show up. They start getting their packages together, and while they're all in the post office getting ready to go out on the routes, 180 German SS soldiers roll up Dude. with three armored cars equipped with 20 millimeter guns and cut the power to the building. Okay, it's wow. like four o'clock in the morning and the German military just rolled up and cut the power. The mailmen are like, oh, we're doing this. All right, so they go, they get their guns, they head up to the second story and stick their guns out the window pointed at the Germans. And it is now a complete standoff between the German SS wow. and the Polish post office. So they're having this military grade standoff <laughs> and then a bunch of civilians start showing up like newspaper journalists and radio stations and people are breaking out cameras and they're recording and then just a giant mass of civilians shows up to watch. And as it turns out, they've all been invited by the Nazis to come and bear witness to the great German military Military retaking oh. the city of Danzig. So once they all show up and get the cameras up and rolling, then the head of the SS walks forward and makes an announcement to the front of the post office, basically saying, hey, why don't you guys just come out and surrender? Give this post office back to the Germans that you stole it from. Clearly, he was anticipating that a bunch of mailmen would just surrender, turning over the post office completely intact, making a great piece of propaganda for the Nazi war machine, <laughs> showing that the Polish were just surrendering at the mere sight of the great German army. But what he got instead was 43 Polish mailmen that responded with, How about new? So now the leader. <laughs> oh man, hit him right in the pride. Dude, I... <laughs> honestly though, honestly though, that is a brown pants moment. 4 a.m., man. I mean, that is the only thing to choose is straight up violence. And that's, that's, see, this is so badass, man. This is, I never even heard of this. This is awesome. Dude's just straight up like, hell no. Come take it from my cold, dead fingers. And I, and I fuck with that. That, that so much respect, mad respect. Of the SS is absolutely furious because his little publicity stunt just backfired and now the Polish mailmen are making him look bad. So he's absolutely going to attack. But here's the thing. He has to attack and try to preserve the post office itself <laughs> to not destroy the building because that's the whole point. They're trying to reclaim the city, not destroy it. But then nothing happens for like half an hour. It's still just a standoff and the Polish mailmen are like, 
Are we fighting or not? What What's happening here? Are we just going to stand here all day pointing guns at each other? What What's the deal? So they waited, and they waited what felt like an eternity, but in reality, it was only half an hour because at 4.45 a.m., there would be a huge explosion off in the distance, and that explosion would be the guns of the German battleship, the Schleswig von Holstein, firing on a Polish military outpost. And these are the first oh. shots of World War II, officially starting the invasion of Poland. This would also be wow. the signal for the SS to begin their attack on the post office as they open fire. Here's the thing with that. The mailmen were inside of a brick building on the second story with machine guns, and the 180 Nazis were standing out in the middle of the street with three armored cars. So as soon as the Polish defenders opened fire with their BARs, the Nazis realized that they had made a strategic fucking error as all of them frantically ran and all 180 of them tried to hide behind these three armored cars. Oh so now all the Nazis are pinned down behind these three armored cars and the three armored cars turn their turrets with their 20 millimeter guns and begin firing on the front door, trying to break it in so that all the soldiers can rush into the building. So the mailman realized what they're doing they grab their rifles their grenades and their bars and they run downstairs and set up firing positions behind the service counter of this post office as all the guns are just aimed at the front door waiting for the germans to break through it and rush in okay do you understand what i'm telling you right now world wow. war ii literally started off like a shitty joke 180 nazis walk into a bar so the nazis finally <laughs> blow open the front Stupid. door <laughs> uh, listen nick has some absolute zingers but I'm going to let that one slide. That's a good one. That's a good, that's like a, that's like a dad joke level. I love that. <laughs> and some Nazis walk into a BAR. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Rifle spells bar. You guys don't need me to baby bop, break that down for you. That's, that's the way to do it, man. <laughs> I love that. So they, so basically they made a fatal funnel. Right? They knew all the Germans were going to have to go through this door. Mm, not, not so good for the Germans. Ten of them come running inside, to which the mailmen are like, You've got mail. <laughs> Four of them are killed immediately, and another six are wounded, as the entire German advance screeches to a halt, and they turn around and are forced to retreat as they come to the painful realization that the Polish mailmen are quite literally hitting their birth certificates with a return to sender stamp. <laughs> now, to be completely fair, there's another battle happening at this exact moment in Danzig over in the naval shipyard. However, it is entirely within the realm of possibility that these four Nazis were the first men to die in World War II, and it was from mailmen with machine guns. Oh as soon as my the initial wave of Germans fell back, there was a huge explosion on the other end of the post office. Konrad Gadurski takes off running towards it with nothing more than his pistol, and some grenades. As he gets there, he turns the corner, seeing that the Germans had blown an enormous hole in the brick wall of the post office. As he begins throwing grenades into an entire platoon of Germans attempting to advance on him before being gunned down. Mm. Conrad was credited with killing four Germans with those grenades and giving the postman just enough time to get to that position and defend themselves. Again, driving the Nazis back and wow. forcing them to retreat. And again, we don't know this for sure because there's another battle happening at this exact moment, but it is entirely within the realm of possibility that Conrad Gadurski has just become the first man to give his life fighting against wow. the Nazis. With the Germans retreating and Konrad Dursky down, the second man in charge, Alphonse Flizikowski, rises to the occasion and begins instructing all the other postal workers what to do, getting them back into a fighting position, anticipating a third attack. But the Germans are so mad and so embarrassed that their publicity stunt is failing this bad <laughs> that they don't want to risk it, and they decide that they're going to call for backup. Bear in mind, it's like 5 o'clock in the morning right wow. now, and the Germans wait 6 hours until they can get reinforced by the regular German army, oh and they can God. show up with our Artillery. They had to show up with two 75 millimeter field guns and a 105 millimeter gun just so they could bombard the entire post office. So they start bombarding the post office with fucking artillery That's and then nuts. send in another attack and they're still pushed back yet again. With German command having no idea what to do, they just start using everything they have. They get mortar teams out there oh and the mortarmen God. start trying to drop mortars on the post office, but they're so inaccurate they end up posing more of a threat to the Germans than they do to the Polish mailmen. Oh so they have to call off the attack, they issue a two hour ceasefire and tell the Polish guys like, hey, 
You got two hours, think about it. You should probably just come out and surrender. Over the next several hours, the Germans would dig underneath the wall of the post office and plant 1,200 pounds of explosives. Whoa. The Germans would then blow an enormous hole in the post office wall as they rushed in to ambush the mailmen. But the Polish mailman refused to surrender as they retreated back to the basement where there was one way in and no way out. And yet again, the Germans have no idea what to do from here because the Polish mailmen are just sitting at the bottom of this staircase with three Browning machine guns waiting for them to try to oh come get them God. so they can gun them down. And the Germans have no idea idea how to proceed. At this point, the German commander comes to the realization that these mail carriers are not going to quit defending their post office as long as there is a post office to defend, and he is just going to get rid of the entire building altogether as he orders the Danzig Fire Department to begin flooding the basement full of gasoline. The mailman immediately recognized the smell and began evacuating the basement as quickly as they could, but not before the gasoline would be ignited by a grenade, killing three of them before the rest could escape. With the building burning and nowhere else to go, many of the postal workers decided that they wanted to surrender, but Alphonse Lizikowski and five other men knew that if they surrendered, they would not be treated well by the Nazis. So they decided that they were going to try to run and escape. The other 36 mail carriers decided to surrender, leaving the building under a white flag. The Germans immediately shot and killed the postal worker that was yeah. carrying that white flag and took the remainder as prisoners. Of the other wow. six postal workers that escaped, Alphonse Flizikowski and one other would be captured the next day on September 2nd, as the other four would actually escape and get away. This would bring the total count of mail carriers that were captured to 38. Over the following days, 10 of them would die in the hospital due to injuries they sustained during the battle and during the fire. The remaining 28 were then declared illegal combatants by the Nazis, and they were all sentenced to death. This decision would later be declared a war crime because these men were not illegal combatants. They were trained and led into battle by Konrad Gadurski, an active and serving military officer wow. in the Polish military. Under his command and the command of Alphonse Flizikowski, 43 mailmen went toe to toe with 180 German SS soldiers <laughs> reinforced with artillery and armored cars. Man. They would die in combat, taking with them 10 Nazis and injuring 22 more. And those are just the official numbers from the Germans, which are most likely under understated due yeah. to their extreme embarrassment. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is to check out fatelectrician.com. Quack bang. Come Ow. on. Is there anything in the end? Oh man. I know I know Nick had to have fun with that story, man. That's a great story. I mean it's tragic. Like what do you you know I, I feel like yes hindsight that's uh once you start firing on them you know there is no ah <sighs> and uh, they didn't take prisoners you know once you start firing on them it was a one-way ticket you know that's and that's the unfortunate reality of of things then but they didn't know that and so man Oh man, to be in their shoes, that is, that is just, that's a, that's a, I mean, World War II, just different breed. Yeah, listen, World War II was no joke. You know, um, legends fought in World War II, a different breed of human fighting for, it, it was, it is something massive fighting for the, the world pretty much. And it's, it's pretty, I feel like there's a lot of people nowadays that wouldn't be so quick to arms, you know, and that's unfortunate. Over there, 42, 42 men were like, hell yeah, give me a gun. And if this thing is going to kick off, we, we know what's going to happen. And we know where we stand. You know, and that's super important, man. That's super important. And I feel like that is just something that... What do I say? Like, this is just... It's it's a tragic story, but it is the first battle of World War II. You know, and that's why I love this deep dive that we're doing with these... with uh, One, with the Battle 360... Uh, and also these other these other stories that are going to be coming down the line, you know, um, hopefully, hopefully, guys, we'll get to World at War on the channel. Hopefully it can, co it can go up without any issues. Right. And and we'll learn more. We'll, we'll we will learn a lot more.
together. And I will brush up on a lot of history that since I don't use it, <laughs> I don't know if I would have to brush up on a lot of history. But anyway, guys, listen. Thank you so much for rocking with me. Thank you so much for rocking with the channel. You guys mean the world to me. We are slowly marching our way upwards uh, on this small channel. And I, I really appreciate you guys, you know, taking your time. I know time is a precious thing. So I do appreciate your guys' time uh, spent with me on, on this channel. Anyway, guys, much love. Make sure you unplug. Do something legendary. And guys, please, since we are ramping up our... our um, our uploads we're going to be st starting next week please in the comments what videos i will be combing through the comment section and getting to videos right and we'll see where it goes from there but you know like i said we are on the precipice of of making this the the main channel for me and and that's what i want this to become is the main channel so I'm here for it if you guys are here for it. I absolutely love these stories. This is right up my alley. I connect. I am here for it. And I'm here with you guys. So this is the best place to be. This is the best place to be. Anyway, hit the thumbs up, comment, subscribe if you haven't. Much love, guys. And I'll see you all in the next video. Later, guys.